On today's episode of Real Life Pharmacology, we are going to talk about allopurinol and a little bit less specific in general, the xanthine oxidase inhibitors. As far as the pharmacology goes with these medications, it's important to remember that xanthine oxidase is an enzyme that basically helps the body uh, promote, create uric acid, or it's in that pathway anyway. So by inhibiting xanthine oxidase, we can therefore reduce uric acid. Uric acid is really a problem in gout. As uric acid levels increase, we have the risk of uh, formation of uh, gout flares. Uh, primarily, uh, the classic case there is where a patient has extreme pain uh, in the uh, great toe, the big toe. Um, that can be really, really uh, troublesome for patients. So allopurinol and febuxostat, which is brand name Eulorc, uh, brand name for allopurinol is xyloprim. Uh, those actually reduce uric acid and help prevent gout flares. Now, when I talk about prevention of gout flares, it's really important to know the difference between prevention and between treatment. Okay, because allopurinol only prevents gout flares. So if you have a patient um, presenting to your care with extreme pain, that type of thing, giving them, prescribing them, um, if they've got a prescription for allopurinol, that's not going to solve the acute pain of the uh, acute gout flare. Very, very important to remember that. We use, for acute flares, we use medications like NSAIDs and prednisone, um, possibly colchicine as well. So very, very important to remember that allopurinol will not treat that acute gout flare. As far as the side effect profile goes, in my experience, allopurinol is generally pretty well tolerated. Uh, it is a very inexpensive medication too, so it's pretty frequently prescribed for anyone um, with gout issues. Uh, the side effects, GI side effects you might see with this medication. Uh, one kind of unique one with allopurinol is that it can contribute or cause uh, hypersensitivity reactions or rash or skin type reactions. And there's a particular genetic variation called HLA-5801. And if patients have that genetic variation, they may be at higher risk. And when I talk about drug interactions too, we'll also uh, think about some meds that may increase that risk of a skin type reaction. And again, not necessarily that you absolutely wouldn't use allopurinol. And again, depends upon the situation clinically. Um, but I think it is important to recognize that we um, might need to keep an eye out for this and educate our patients, certainly, um, that there is a, a rare chance of a rash or skin type reaction. One important pearl with dosing is you got to remember that allopurinol uh, can accumulate in kidney dysfunction. I do remember a scenario uh, where we had a patient go into acute renal failure and they ended up having a skin reaction as well. And it was suspected that the allopurinol uh, concentrations maybe could have caused this because when your um, kidneys fail, uh, they don't pump out the drug as efficiently and those uh, levels, those concentrations can begin to accumulate and obviously cause collateral damage such as side effects. I want to thank you guys all for the kind ratings and reviews um, on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, if you have a second, haven't left us a, a review there, uh, please feel free to do so. It, it greatly uh, um, helps our uh, standing as far as iTunes goes. So uh, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, if you're in the market for uh, premium content for NAPLEX, for BCPS, uh, we've got some books available as well, uh, meded101.com slash store. Again, very uh, similar real-life content. We try to uh, tailor our approach and uh, give you guys some good uh, experience uh, from the, the real world here. So with that, we'll finish up on drug interactions. And um, th a couple of drugs I, I wanted to mention uh, that can elevate uric acid, not necessarily that they're uh, specifically a drug interaction with allopurinol, 
Uh, but these drugs can raise uric acid and potentially counteract the effects that we're trying to get with allopurinol. So one is niacin. It's an over the or can be an over the counter medication. I have seen patients on this supplement. So definitely remember that one can raise uric acid levels. If you've got a patient with gout with elevated uric acid, uh, definitely uh, I'd encourage to probably cut that out. Uh, thiazide diuretics, so chlorothalidone, hydrochlorothiazide, pretty common class of blood pressure type medication. May also see it used for edema. I'll refer you back uh, to the uh, podcast on thiazide specifically uh, if you want to learn more about them. But those drugs can raise uric acid as well. So in, in an acute gout flare, in an elevated uric acid situation, got to remember to look at all those other medications, which is classically what I'm trained to do and, and what I uh, what a clinical pharmacist helps with is identifying some of those issues. Um, but definitely take a peek at that med list. See if you can spot any other meds like those two examples that can raise uric acid. Uh, other drug interactions potentially, remember that skin reaction. Uh, so there may be an increased likelihood of that reaction with an ACE inhibitor. Um, another class that you may have an increased risk of skin type reactions are penicillin type antibiotics, so moxicillin, things like that. So something to keep an eye on, uh, maybe monitor your patients a little more closely for. Uh, one other one that isn't really common but can be pretty significant uh, is azathioprine. So azathioprine is an immunosuppressive type agent. And allopurinol, when used in combination with azathioprine, can actually increase concentrations or increase activity of uh, the azathioprine. So ultimately, that could lead to uh, more toxicity from that medication. And since it's an immunosuppressive agent, we could suppress the immune system more than we would potentially like. Hope you enjoyed the podcast today. Again, feel free to leave us a rating review on iTunes. Greatly appreciated if you do that um, or whichever um, media you're listening through. Uh, certainly appreciated there. I've got that free giveaway, 31-page um, PDF, as well as a 100-question pharmacology um, quiz test, whatever you want to call it, uh, simply for subscribing to the uh, reallifepharmacology.com podcast. Uh, pretty much what I send out with that is simply an email update when there's a, a new podcast. Uh, if I've got a new book or something else, you may get an email on that as well. But I definitely respect your email and, and try not to uh, spam you like some other websites might do. So again, reallifepharmacology.com, those resources are free. Uh, take care. Thanks for listening and hope you learned something today.